This is the Bethel Business Podcast, brought to you by the Bethel Chamber of Commerce in Bethel, Connecticut, and produced by Smith Douglas Associates. Today we are talking with Cynthia Rauschert of Spark Arts here in Bethel, Connecticut. Oh, it's nice to be here with you. So tell me, what does Spark Arts do? Well, Spark Arts was originally created by another owner, and I took over in February of this year, 2017, intending to keep the vision going that was Spark Arts. And Spark Arts is basically, it's a creative playground for all ages. We're moving in the direction of being a movement studio, primarily focused on circus and dance, and then having supporting programs in the other arts disciplines. Um, So we were talking to a young man today who likes to do fashion design and he would love to make costumes for the dancers and for the circus artists. And so, you know, he could potentially do a fashion design class uh, that, you know, we do a year long program. And at the end, all the costumes are made by our students and all the dancers and circus performers are performing. But so right now we have birthday parties, we have summer camps, and we have special events for adults, including wine and paint. We have improv night once a month. Uh, we go out to lots of community events and bring circus things. So you have some history in the circus itself. My history is as a variety performer who performs circus arts. My closest to being in a circus was being with Cirque du Soleil as an advanced promotional team. Um, So it was me and four other performers and we traveled around the United States in a tour bus and would go before the show and perform at community events and schools and to drum up the interest in people going to the shows Um, and so I did that and then also well I started circus by juggling when I was 29 I'm now 46 and I joined a juggling club and because I was like a juggling club that sounds fun and so I joined a juggling club and from there I just it just kept snowballing and it's the most incredible community that I've ever had the good fortune to come into And so I've stayed with it and it changed my life. And so I am a circus educator specifically, and along with a lot of my peers, we are circus educators because we want to bring that sort of magic and empowerment to other people of all ages, young people and adults. As I said, I was 30, you know, when I started this. So So what other training did you have? I've worn many hats. I was a dog groomer for 10 years uh, while I was putting myself through school to become a marketing art and design professional. And so I freelanced that for many years until somebody offered me money to juggle and walk on stilts, which is something I was doing as a hobby. And uh, and that was fun. And so then I started performing professionally in that manner and teaching on the side. And then I had a lifelong dream lifelong, absolutely lifelong dream of going to clown school. Uh, When I got my design degree, I thought I would go to clown school after that, but the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey clown school had shut down. And so then a few years later, I was uh, out and about and somebody told me about the San Francisco Circus Center and they have a clown conservatory program. And I went out there to do that program, which was partnered with a uh, new college of California a college out there. And I actually have the one of two of the first bachelor's degrees uh, offered in theatrical clowning in this country. So I earned that in 2007. And, you know, I went out there to clown school because I wanted to be a hospital clown. I really live in service a lot, and I've never, I've never been paid to be a clown. I only go to hospitals. I go to senior centers. I've worked with refugees. I've worked uh, all around the world in, in different places. And, but teaching circus skills, I don't like to entertain people. I like to teach people. It up, uplifts them. It empowers them. Um, children treat party performers pretty poorly usually but they teach people who teach them they they treat people who teach them things with a lot of respect because they get respect so it's a really that's that's what I do so my training I've been trained in social circus through the Cirque du Monde program with Cirque du Soleil and social circus is using circus as a tool to break down social barriers and uplift people and and you know teach social skills Uh, I have been trained in circus arts therapy by Carrie Heller at the Circus Arts Institute in Atlanta, Georgia. I have some Waldorf education background teaching, um, but I decided I didn't want to be a classroom teacher, so I didn't continue to do that program. Um, And then I've trained with 
masters in clowning and juggling and other variety performance arts. Where are you from? I grew up in New Jersey. Yeah. How did you end up in Bethel, Connecticut? Oh, Bethel. I love Bethel. I think I was called here to bring my passion for the circus arts here, honestly. I lived in California, Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area for the past 10 years and I needed to come home and be with my grandma and my mom and my family and my people. I missed I missed the straight shooting of the Northeast. I missed the sarcasm. I missed the, the real genuine friendliness and really knowing and understanding how people feel when you mm -hmm. talk to them. And so I needed a soft landing and I did not want to go to New Jersey. And uh, so I, I also looked into healthcare programs mm -hmm. and uh, at Connecticut's was the best. And I have two very dear friends here, Michael and Jennifer Savageau at Noteworthy Chocolates. So they have been very close family friends of mine for a long time. Their children call me Aunt Cynthia mm -hmm. and they offered me a soft landing. And I'd, I've been to visit Bethel to visit them many times and I loved it. I never really got to know it. And then in staying with them, I got to know it a little bit better and it's... It's everything that I've been looking for for the past several years in California. I wanted a small community. I wanted a village that I could walk from one place to another to get the things that I need and take care of my basic essentials. I wanted to walk into some place and be able to say hello to people who I knew their name and have them recognize me. And I just, you know, I wanted to be part of something where, I mean, this community is just fantastic. I got here last summer and I came down every weekend. I was working in Middletown at the Children's Circus and I would come down every weekend in June and July and there was always something happening and everybody was smiling and happy and it was like a Norman Rockwell meet Gilmore Girls meets the Greenwich Village because it's just got all this this fun stuff here so I just I found out it was P.T. Barnum's hometown and that really just kind of blew me away it was really exciting and I just decided that I wanted to stay what made you decide to buy Spark Arts when it came up for sale I'm crazy <laughs> Oh, I wanted to keep it going. It seems like a really valuable part of Bethel and downtown Bethel. And I, I see and hear from a lot of Bethel locals or the OB, the original Bethel people, uh, that Bethel is growing and changing and that there's, a, there's, you know, there's some people that are for it and some people that aren't, uh, but that this place, Spark Arts, especially right here on Greenwood Avenue, brings a certain light and it brings a bridge between the people that want the progress and the people that don't want the progress and they come together in the arts and they you know you get you can have the funky person with the really straight person with the everybody can kind of come together in the arts and uh it's just a good it's just a good thing it's a nice place to have right downtown where people can come in and do things that lift them up and make them feel like themselves Tell me more about your circus program. What do you teach kids if they sign up for a circus camp or a circus class? Okay, that is the perennial question. People are like, oh, circus, that's so cool. What do you do? You know, what is it that happens in there? So we do we do a lot i mean we don't do what most people think that we do that makes people go oh i don't want i don't want to do circus Ugh. uh we teach so i say i teach life skills hidden behind circus skills so we do teach juggling for instance so everybody knows what juggling is everybody thinks it's kid stuff it's really not uh, you don't see children juggling in the circus because they can't um, so I work developmentally with them, and so with five to seven year olds, I do a lot of stuff with crossing the midline and bilateral coordination, or uh, bimanual coordination. It's also called, which is where you're working both parts of your both sides of your body and therefore both sides of your brain at the same time, which is a very important developmental thing. As children get older and reach different developmental milestones, I teach them new things and other things that come on there. So we learn. We learn equilibristics, uh, which are really good for fine and gross motor skills and core strength and body awareness. And that includes things like unicycle, partner balancing and pyramids, uh, acrobatics, walking on stilts, rollabola, which is also known as a balance board. And if anybody ever watches America's Got Talent, you've seen them stack these boards up, 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 and they're balancing on them. So we do that, but we don't stack them up, 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 up. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then all the, you know, the juggling and the plate spinning and all of those are really good for the fine motor skills and they're good for body awareness and spatial awareness. We, I use them for working with partnership. I use them with special needs folks and autistic children who don't come out, like they don't come out of themselves very much. They can, when they learn to juggle and they learn to juggle with a partner or throw scarves back and forth with a partner, instead of being in therapy to learn social skills, they're in a circus class to learn juggling and the social skills just happen so it's really good with that kind of stuff I mean we it, it, it really does it all I mean socially you have to engage with people it's positive risk taking it's positive touch it's you know you you're if you're a little person a little small little kid that's smaller than average in your class and everybody picks you last and nobody ever does anything suddenly you're flying high because you get to be the one that gets picked up and you get to be on top when you're the the, the pyramid if you're the kid that is grossly over weight and extremely uncoordinated you are now holding up all of those other kids because you're on the bottom and you're a solid and strong base and so you can hold up all those other kids and you're now very important so we have that social thing um, cognitively it helps because of what I said the bimanual coordination and physically you get core strength you get flexibility body awareness all of that kind of stuff emotional with the positive risk-taking and role acquisition you become a leader and all of that kind of thing so you build self-confidence you build empathy, you learn a lot of different things in that way. This would be a good program for Everybody. young athletes. Yes, uh, definitely for young athletes, very much so. Because a lot of times, well, my kids do sports, they don't need to do circus. My kids are a dancer, they don't need to do circus. But actually they do, because when you're training in dance, you're training very specific movements when you're training in sports you're training very specific movements you're doing it on purpose to get to a very specific goal with circus you're doing so many different things that it fine tunes all of the skills that you already have and then it broadens them so you will get better at the things that you do by practicing circus skills you will have i mean if you're practicing balance and you're a football player and you've gotten really strong in practicing balance by doing a roller bola or a unicycle you're going to find that you'll be able to dodge and weave or whatever it is that the football players do uh you know much better you're going to be much more sharp and and ready to go so it's really good for that and dancers and swimmers as well it's just fantastic also winter guard which i know is really popular around here you know they do the things with the the rifles and the batons and all that and you know i mean we have this with the juggling clubs which lay people call pins but they're called juggling clubs uh, all really great stuff to help really fine tune what they're going for so i'm not looking to make professional circus artists uh, you can go to new york city and find any number of schools there or boston and, and find places to do that i'm looking to help people enhance their lives that they're leading now um and i'm also looking for kids that haven't found their place yet you know maybe this is maybe this is their place maybe circus is the thing they feel comfortable in because it is non-competitive and it is creative and it allows for creativity along with athleticism and strength and all that stuff so can adults find anything useful through with circus nah, skills? Yeah, adults can't do anything <laughs> yes of course like i said i started when i was 29 and it helps you with your self-confidence. It helps you with your flexibility. I mean, people that are our age in, you know, early to later middle age, if you're working on balance skills, you're not going to fall down 20 years from now. You know, if you're working on bimanual coordinative skills, excuse me, like juggling, your brain is going to stay sharper and you have less of a risk of Alzheimer's coming down later. So that would go for anybody, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I do senior work all the time. Well, I did senior work all the time in California. I will be looking for that here as well. But I, get that I have two different levels of senior work because the, you know, the AARP says you're a senior when you're 55, which is crazy. I do the, you know, just regular like silver circus where they come in and they play with each other and we do all this great stuff where they're moving around and they're moving their bodies and it's stretching and flexibility and balance and coordination and all these wonderful things. It's a great social. We play uh, improv games and clowning games that just really like wakes you up. Uh, and then I do the armchair version of that, which I call the armchair circus. And so you can sit or stand as needed. And we do, I mean, we do all, people are like, well, what are you going to do with, you know, senior citizens? And I'm like, I do the same thing with senior citizens that I do with five-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 20-year-olds, and 25-year-olds. You know, there's always ways to grade it down. 
up and down in either direction and you can have mixed abilities because everyone will have their own point you know if they reach a point it's all progressive so if you reach a point where you're like yeah this is easy i got this well then you find a new thing to do with it and you work on it until you get that so it's really it's good stuff where do you see spark arts in three to five years well the llc is called circus moves so I, when I took on Spark Arts from the previous owner, our purchase agreement included the trade name, and that is Spark Arts. So we will continue as Spark Arts as an umbrella, but my goal is to create, I'm going to create a circus program, a thriving circus program. And if that is all that remains in this building in three years, which is quite possible, then Spark Arts will be Circus Moves, and that will be its brand and identity, and it will stay as that. At the moment, what I'd really actually like to do, I mean, I want to be all circus all the time, but if I could create Spark Arts as a cooperative or a collective or like an umbrella to house other artists who want to come in and use it as a training space or use it as a place to hold their own classes and have it support and incubate their own program, um, that that would be fantastic, you know, and, and have that run. You know, if I get to a point where financially I can have someone come in and run Spark Arts, I'll be running Circus Moves. And within Spark Arts, maybe there's a dance moves, maybe there's a fitness moves, maybe there's a sewing moves, maybe there's, you know, whatever. For now, I'm that person running all of that. But, uh, you know, ideally, if it's not just all circus all the time, it will be a collective that is a, a wonderful space for artists to come in. Right now, we do rent for rehearsal space uh, local band Gorgia they play at the Friday night food truck food truck Fridays uh, they did it the first one this year uh, they rehearse here um, I have a, a local puppeteer who comes in and rehearses here I have dancers that rehearse here uh, for a very low fee uh, hourly fee um, and then I'm working on working with a couple of other artists to bring their programs in and we'll be working on a rental plus percentage base so if anybody wants to come and reach out to me you know and use the space it's it's we've got a large front studio with a whole wall of mirrors um, and very interesting and nice lights lighting we have some fun disco lights if you want those that's our front studio it's great for movement we have lots of mats mm -hmm. totally available for use and then our back studio also has one wall that has mirror on it. it's much smaller uh, so it'd be good for small movement classes if you need a mirror and very, very good for rehearsal we've got two sinks uh, counter space and lots of wonderful tables that are very flexible uh, in their use it's a really fantastic multi-purpose uh, creative arts and movement space. Over the summer, you're doing a series of summer camps for various and sundry kids? Yes. They fall into the legal category of a summer program. Uh, we don't do all-day child care, um, so we don't have aftercare. We don't have before and after care. They are three-hour programs that run uh, in the morning and in the afternoon, um, and we have three more circus camps one of them is specifically stilts and unicycles the other two are general circus skills camps where they get to try out a bunch of different stuff we actually just finished today uh, the first ever circus class circus show circus camp it's the first ever circus camp here in bethel the home of pt barnum uh, and so i feel that we really made history because you know we just we had it we started it we finished it we had a great show there were 30 people in the audience they loved it i mean they were super raucous and not all of them were family and friends of the students so i got a lot of positive feedback so we have two more camps three more circus camps and then possibly one in august we have a project runway camp, which I'm really excited about because we have a Parsons School of Design, fashion design student who's going to be running it. And so that's just going to be so much fun. Uh, we have improv and acting and that starts on July 10th. We have intro to sewing, which starts on July 10th. And I'm saying these dates because those are kind of, you know, sign up now <laughs> if you want to do it because it's coming, you're running out of time. The others are later in July and August. Uh, we have a Disney song and dance for little kids, uh, which also happens the morning of the little kid circus. And then we have a hip hop dance and puppetry and a stop motion movie making. And the stop motion movie making camp 
program uh, I'm really excited about because it's another local artist um, and his name is Johnny Parks and he's very active in Danbury at the Danbury Innovation Center. Uh, he also works at the Workspace Academy and Workspace Education, uh, the homeschool place here in town that opened up this past year. Um, and he does stop motion animation. He's done some great work. He had a Kickstarter recently for a short film that he's doing called What the Mouse, which uh, tackles a lot of adult themes uh, in depression, anxiety, things like that. Um, but with these wonderful darling creatures that you can really relate to, a mouse, an agoraphobic snail. Anyway, I'm promoting him now, but he's great because <laughs> he's coming in. He's going to do this camp, and it's and it's really fantastic. He'll actually be here for the Bethel Summerfest all day doing demos, stop motion animation demos. Um, so people can come in and make like little mini movies and they can use their phones to record it, you know, so he'll be coming in and doing that. Yep. And we have Circus Club every Tuesday mm -hmm. at 4.15 for drop-in kids. It's for kids ages six and up because uh, it's a club. It's not a class, but they basically learn like a class. There's just no real commitment necessary. We have Juggling Club, which is open to the public all ages, starting at 7 p.m. every Thursday in conjunction with the Walking Downtown program that some of the local retail places are doing so they they close up at seven and then we've got our juggling club so you can stop by and come in here and learn how to juggle it's five bucks and just come in and you use our equipment and we'll show you what to do we have improv night which is for adults and that's every second friday and that's super fun it's a byob event and you come in and you laugh you laugh you laugh you just laugh and laugh and laugh the whole time it's really fun um, we're gonna grow we're gonna keep on doing more as we keep going Oh, and oh, oh, that reminds me. So July 29th, we have National Dance Day. And so we're celebrating that to go along with So You Think You Can Dance and Dizzy Feet. And so we have uh, $5 dance classes all day long in all different kinds of dance. We have hip hop and we have ballet and we have contemporary and we have something called wedding dance workout which is happening later in the day and that one is for you know to get your sweat going and like you're going to be dancing to like wedding dance songs which is we all get drunk and silly at weddings and move and this this wonderful woman decided that she wanted to make a class out of it uh and we have belly dance and it's all kinds of stuff so people should come and check that out and there will be discounts on our fall dance program which starts the week of September 5th. Uh, the dance and circus programs will both start that week and we'll be offering, I'll be offering a pre-K circus class during the week. We'll also have pre-K dance classes during the week, uh, during school day. I'm gonna probably do a mommy and me type of a thing for circus. We'll have after school classes in both dance and circus. And just like dance has multiple disciplines, so does circus. So I will have a still, still walking class, general circus skills class, adults, teens, those kind of things. And and, uh, the program should be up. We should have that finished hopefully by the end of July, by the National Dance Day event. Um, we'll have that schedule up and so people can come in and check it out. Do you have a website? Yes, two. Uh, Spark Arts website, which will have a general description of everything, is www.sparkartsbethel.com. It's one spark for multiple arts in Bethel. Dot com. So sparkartsbethel.com. And then if you want to know more about the, the circus programs, I'm still working on merging all the information. So a lot about me and my background and what I do with circus and what circus can do for you is at www.circusmoves.com. One circus, many moves. <laughs> Circusmoves.com. Where is Spark Arts in Bethel? Spark Arts is located at 137 Greenwood Avenue. We're in the same building as Save a Suit. Uh, we are across the street from Jacqueline's and John Fulton Jewelry, both fantastic neighbors. We're right there, right in the middle. What, if any, advice do you have for any artists who are thinking of settling in the Bethel area? If an artist wanted to move to Bethel, the advice that I would give them is well, definitely do it because it's wonderful. It's mm -hmm. very, it's just, but it, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a safe place. It's a comfortable place. It's not a really edgy place, you know, so it depends on the artist. Mm -hmm. um, but if they were to come here and if they were to move here, really, it would be go out and talk to people and go to networking things. As weird as that sounds, that sounded like the worst thing in the world for me. And so far, it's been one of my favorite things to do because I've met the best people at these different networking events. But, you know, go to the community events, go and network and talk to people because that's where you'll get your 
connections to find your support and your passion and, you know, to be able to start to grow your roots. I hope my roots are brand new. I'm just such a seedling here. Um, just hoping that they're going to really take and stick. Where do you find your clients? How do people find you? It's all word of mouth right now. I talk, I find my teachers that way. I find my clients that way. But, you know, right now it's just getting out there and handing out postcards and putting up flyers and just talking to people and be bold. And honestly, that might be the most, the best advice that I can give, not just to any artists moving to the area or anybody moving to the area, but anybody doing anything anywhere, be bold. Just be bold. Like live, live out loud, be bold, do it. Like if you think, that that's something you want to do, uh, stop before you finish the sentence, oh, but, and just go and do it. You'd rather regret things that you did than the things that you didn't do. And let me tell you, I've packed up my life and moved across the country twice. <laughs> and it's really scary. And people say, oh, I envy you. You, 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 you have, you know, get to have such adventures and, uh, the, it's terrifying. So it's not that envious, but, um, I don't think that they envy my experience. I think that they envy my courage and, you know, all it is is a decision and commitment and anyone can do it. So. Thank you very much for your time today. Good luck. Thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity and I'm looking forward to getting to know you and the Bethel business community and the Bethel social community much better as I go forward. Thank you for listening to the Bethel Business Podcast. For more information about the Bethel Chamber of Commerce, call 203-743-6500 or visit discoverbethelct.com. If you run a business in the Bethel area and are interested in being a guest on this podcast, contact Smith Douglas Associates at 203-628-2606.